Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Karen, this is Andrew, and we've been living in Taipei, Taiwan for one year. Today, we're gonna talk with you about the biggest challenges of living in Taipei. As an American. As an American. As an American. All right, so your experience of Taiwan may be a little bit different than ours depending on where you're at in life. So we found it helpful to provide a quick background on us so you can understand where we're coming from. I'm 28 years old, Karen is 39, and we've both been in the business world for quite a while. We're both Americans, we don't speak Chinese, we chose not to live in an expat neighborhood, and we're both vegan eating all plant-based food. And note that these are just our top 10 challenges, but there are definitely a few more that you should know about. We have a blog post that we'll link to down below that outlines the whole list of pros and challenges about living in Taipei, Taiwan. And before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to the channel for more tips and videos about plant-based eating and trying new things to get outside of your comfort zone. <laughs> Number one, housing standards are very different. Taipei has smaller apartments and they can often be a bit more outdated. The plumbing isn't always the best. Even in the more updated apartments, the refrigerators and appliances are a lot smaller. You will often get a one burner stove, maybe two if you're lucky. We were lucky to get two, uh, but we looked a lot to be able to get that because we love to cook. We have a washer and dryer combo that's in our kitchen, but the dryers are sparse. Not many people always get that. You won't find ovens, you won't find dishwashers. So that's something to really get used to. Also, housing prices are on the rise in Taipei. So our apartment here, which is about 500, 600 square feet, is 35,000 NTD, which is around 1,200 US. And that might not be as expensive as some major cities in the United States, but it's definitely not that much less than what an apartment, a similar apartment would cost in Denver, Colorado, which is where we're from. Number two, cost of living is higher than expected. I think both Karen and I were a little naive in the sense of thinking we were maybe going to somewhere like Thailand or Vietnam where the cost of living is much lower than the US. But here in Taipei, costs are definitely more than we expected. Things like housing, grocery shopping, consumer products like electronics, clothing, shoes are probably 20 to 30% higher than they are in the US even. Now if you're living in somewhere like Tainan or if you go a little bit south, the cost of living will be more within your expectations, but Taipei City is definitely more expensive than we had anticipated. One thing I'd suggest is going to Numbio. It's a, a website where you can type in two different cities and compare the cost of living to both. Grocery shopping can be a little frustrating. When we first moved here, trying to find things like peanut butter, syrup, or standard West, common Western items was really difficult. The prices of them are really high, so even for a bottle of uh, syrup, which when you can find it, it can be sometimes 12 to $16 per bottle. Even produce like kale or spinach or berries that you're used to getting in the United States will not be available here. So it's better just to go to the local market, start learning what the local produce is and what's in season, and cooking and shopping with that. Next up, traditional Taiwanese cuisine takes some getting used to. We really like a lot of depth of flavor. Mexican food, Indian food, Thai food, anything that's just really spicy. Traditional Taiwanese food that we've tried seems to lack that same level of flavor. A little bland. It's a little bland overall. There are definitely shops that you can find, uh, you know, noodle shops and, and different We places. know our favorites, where to find those. Yes, like, we know that the have favorites. a little bit more spiciness. And mind you, they have pastries and sweets down, but those traditional dishes have not been completely our favorite. Another thing that's challenging for us is it's very difficult to find restaurants that have uncooked vegetables. Salads, sandwiches, that's just not really a thing here in Taiwan. Number five, there is a lot of plastic use in Taiwan. So if you're someone who's very environmentally conscious, this can be an adjustment to get used to, or you just will not adjust to it and you will try to make changes in the markets like I do when I go, annoyingly for the people who work there, I'm sure. But at the grocery stores, everything, all the produce is wrapped in plastic. Even crackers that you buy in cardboard boxes, each individual cracker was individually plastic wrapped, which was really frustrating. Um, when you go to the open markets and the traditional 
traditional markets. And all the produce is out and not wrapped in plastic, which is why I go there, and I bring my reusable bag, they still want to put everything in plastic. So you have to be a pretty direct and continue to say, Huyang Daitsa, which is, I don't want a bag over and over. There's also bubble tea on every corner, and the government has put a ban on single plastic use and plastic straws, but we have not seen the effects of that yet, so hopefully that continues to get better here. Next, not knowing the language can feel isolating at times. Learning a bit of Chinese before you come to Taiwan is a huge help. Yes. As we've mentioned in previous videos, you can definitely get around with English, but everyone around you is going to be speaking Chinese all of the time, and it pays to just know certain words Buyang Daitsa, Ni Hao, <laughs> Ordering Bing your... De Cafe. <laughs> there are times that I go to order coffee and I say the same things over in the little phrases that I know, but I feel I feel lonely when I can't continue the conversation further, and that has been quite a struggle here. I'd recommend reading Fluent Forever. It was one that we read when we first came here. It's not about speaking Chinese specifically, but it puts you in the proper mindset to learn a new language. Number seven, summers can be very, very hot. While it's great that the rest of the year, the weather is very mild in the summers, it's so hot that you don't really want to go outside during the day. If you do go outside, you want to have an umbrella that you will carry around to block you from the sun and shade you when you're at stoplight. The sidewalks are covered, but not everywhere. So prepare for that. You won't go on hikes during the day. Save that for during the winter or get up early in the morning to do your runs and your hikes. Number eight, city life can be overwhelming. Taipei is extremely population dense. You can't go anywhere in the city without being in crowds of people. It's probably been one of my biggest struggles here for sure. What goes into that as well is the noise. The scooters are extremely loud on the streets. It can be hard to talk on the phone or even have a conversation with someone you're walking with. And we had the brilliant idea to live on a night market street, which we would not recommend for anybody moving to Taiwan because the night market happens every single night of the week from about 5 p.m. until midnight. There are people, probably thousands of people, walking up and down the street. Kids, garbage people with trucks, horns. Garbage <laughs> trucks coming down. <laughs> I don't know what, we're not sure what the sounds really are, but we know that they're loud. There's definitely air pollution in Taipei City. Probably not as much as we had expected, but some days will be a little bit hazy, and other day, days you'll get nice blue skies out. So check on Google. They, you can check the air quality index if you just type that into Google, and it'll tell you day by day what to expect. And finally, in regards to city life, the tap water is questionable. I've done way too much research on this about if the tap water is safe to drink, and if it's not, I've interviewed people on the streets. <laughs> The conclusion is I have no idea. At the source, they have they put a lot of chlorine in the water, so it is safe, but Taipei has a lot of old piping and there's potential to get metal in your water. So, so we actually use these, um, which is sad because it's a waste of plastic, but we do buy like these big filtered water bottles, which is expensive. Again, it's questionable. Some people will drink the tap water, water that's up to you. Number nine, clothes shopping and haircuts are a challenge. This may seem a little bit superficial to talk about, but it does add into your quality of living day after day. So my size is a little bit bigger and taller than a lot of the Taiwanese women, and many of the shirts I've gone shopping for and tried to try on are like come up to here on me. The shorts don't always fit, and I have to wait until I go home to go shopping. It's also hard to find hairdressers in Taiwan. My hair is very different than most of the Taiwanese here, being curlier, being blonde, and I can't communicate so it would be helpful if I knew Chinese and even the Western more Western styled hair salons I've gone to have been extremely expensive still haven't quite known how to do my hair I've also tried to get my eyebrows done but I've been told by salons if I don't speak Chinese that they are not going to help me and finally Netflix shows are limited potentially the most important point out of all 10 of these. <laughs> yeah. So the good news is you can access Netflix. We have our Roku here and plug it into the TV and it works great. The problem is that the amount of shows and movies that you get is extremely limited. The reason is Netflix has to pay per country for the rights for all of their shows and movies. And Taiwan probably isn't too high on their priority list. You'll get some shows and movies, but they're gonna be probably a little bit outdated compared to what your friends are watching in the US. 
this is just our list of the top 10 challenges that we've had while we are here. There are a few more that I think would be helpful for you. And so we've listed those in a blog post. We will link that down below. Check that out. And please continue to follow us along. We're gonna have a few more posts about our time in Taipei, Taiwan, as well as other travel destinations, plant-based eating, and having the courage to go out there and do new things and get out of your comfort zone. So continue to follow us and thanks for watching. Thank you.